Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today it's the first chance of me to get my actual hands on in the office, our first X870E motherboard. The uh, board launch has been staggered, so it's slightly later than the original CPUs, which is a first for me, if I'm honest. I still think it's very strange. But the first one I'm going to be taking a look at is the ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. For the minute, it's the highest end Asus board that I've managed to get my uh, hands on, but it's coming in a lovely understated black design, much like the heroes have done before. But um, the reason why I brought it up rather than just stating the obvious is it, it feels like a dark hero to me straight out the bat. But if you do end up buying one, you're gonna be interested in what comes in the box as well, because there are, there are a couple of funky things in the box. Um, sticker pack, obviously some of you do still love to put these around your room, but you do get like a metal membership card as well that you can sign and you can <coughs> register online. But when we take a look on the business side, you do get your magnetic Wi-Fi dongle, but these are quick release fittings, which I will show you more about in a minute. This is one of the cool things though, this is the reason why I'm showing you what's in the box. And uh, I've left it in the plastic so that it is blatantly obvious what it is, but here's a bottle opener. Uh, one of the things I will say though is, although it is big, it's credit card sized, so it can obviously fit in your wallet. And it's you're going to need to be thick metal, I believe it's aluminium, um, so that it doesn't bend when you open your bottle. But Credit card size is fairly cool. Nice touch though. Finally getting to the point where we're seeing more USB sticks with the drivers and stuff. Just a reminder though, that the drivers can and should be updated regularly. Uh, but where it is USB, you can delete the old ones and smash some new ones on there. So that's all, all, all always good. And then other things to talk about is you've got a few SATA cables, you've got an extension lead for the uh, addressable RGB, and then some other rubber covers and stuff like that. But that is it for inside the box. As I move everything out of the way, and we can have a proper look at the motherboard itself. Up on the top, eight pins. These are actually, if you have a look, metal shielded, but they are solid pins inside which is a sign of them wanting to make sure that your power is absolutely perfect. And it's a really nice touch. I think with a high-end board like this or anything that even possibly remotely could draw a lot of power, that should be an absolute minimum requirement. Uh, we have four PWM headers at the top. You've got CPU fan, CPU optional, AIO pump, and then chassis fan number two. Code readout up here, which is always handy for you to be able to watch and diagnose any possible issues with the startup sequence. Addressable RGB here. One of the things I will say about the board is there are only addressable RGB headers. There are no four pin RGB headers on this board at all. Uh, start and then a flex key. And then you've also got the uh, retry button down here, which is a small one. You can obviously decide what you want the flex key to do and you can uh, set that yourself within the BIOS. Uh, then you do have another PWM header here. Moving down, the 24 pin, they're all solid pins as well. And then you do have an additional eight pin down here so that you've got uh, extra juice that you can feed into the PCR Express if needed. That's um, ATX 3.1 spec. Now we do need to keep an eye on this when we start getting beefy, power hungry graphics cards. But if things are right about the 5000 series, then you never know, we might actually need them. This is USB uh, 20 gigabits a second. Uh, and it's also got a 60 watt charge option on it as well. That is one of two on the motherboard. You have another fan header there. Then you have four SATA headers as we slide down. A mini SAS slot, which is quite cool. You don't see those uh, very often. You do need to buy an extra cable for this though. Then you have uh, an external USB 3.2 Gen 2 for your normal A slots here. And then there is another one down the bottom as well, over here. This is your second 
um, USB 20 gigabits a second connector on this one. These are obviously will go out to external C headers. So the fact that you've got a couple is uh, perfect. And it kind of backs up what we've got on the uh, back panel when we get there as well. Two internal USB 2s. Don't forget, if you do need extra for things like power supplies, um, AIOs, and anything that's going to use this, you can pick up USB internal hubs quite easily. Uh, weirdly, for builds, it's something I keep in a drawer to make sure I have plenty of them. And you have another two addressable RGBs here. So in total, we have three addressable RGB headers, no four pin headers at all. And then we have another two PWM headers here. So in total, that gives us eight PWM headers on the board. Moving on, we do have a, a very easy to use and drop quite clearly uh, NVMe heatsink. You've got a heatsink pad on the inside to go onto the aluminium frame. Then you've got heatsink pad here. You do get some clips that you can put onto the um, back plate here so that you can clip it into shorter NVMEs should you need it. Uh, I have actually pre-fitted them down the bottom here. But what I did want to do is just show you how easy it is to attach and detach this top one. It is ridiculously simple. When I was away at uh, Gamescom, I was managing to do that with one hand. Now I did show you the uh, area down here where you can see you have a further four NVMe headers. So on the board, you do have three P PCR Express 5 and then two PCR Express 4. And with those little adapters, you can slide them in and out for shorter NVMEs should you need them. So that will be incredibly uh, handy for those of you that uh, may want to populate all of these slots. When it comes to how they're wired though, uh, and into the chipset, we actually have to save that for uh, NDA day which is towards the end of this month. At the moment, I think it's the 30th. Around the back, two USB 4 headers. USB 4, that's a uh, big thing to shout about. It's 60 gigabits, uh, sorry, 40 gigabits a second. So uh, lots and lots of bandwidth available with these ones. The rest of the USBs are all 10 gigabits a second. So you've got two Cs here, and then you have a total of six A's. They are all 10 gigabits a second. Ethernet wise, you've got 5G, you've got 2.5G. The Wi-Fi 7 here that I told you about with the Quick Connects is our Wi-Fi 7, and it's 320 megahertz bandwidth and up to 6.5 gigabits per second in their STR mode. It also does uh, Bluetooth uh, 5.4. You can see though up here, because the, a lot of the CPUs are going to have onboard video as well. You've got HDMI. I always used to think these were pointless unless you were fault finding or your graphics card had died. Uh, but I've actually started using this as an extra display out because uh, graphics cards or NVIDIA cards can only support four. And I needed an extra one for certain things that I was doing in the office. So this has actually ended up being really handy for me recently. Uh, clear CMOS port. And then you have uh, your uh, BIOS flashback here and that's where you plug it in make sure you follow the guides for BIOS flashback but once you get your head around it it's actually really easy to use while we're looking at uh, this section of the board the VRM it's 18 plus 2 plus 2 now the 18 are 110 amps the plus 2 plus 2 are 90 amps so plenty of juice there I've not been told a complete breakdown about the specs of the power delivery yet that's all the information I've got but one of the things that we can talk about while we're here, and it was something they spoke to us about when I was at Gamescom, and we got the briefing for this, was the Nitro Path technology for the DIMM slots. Effectively, they've just shortened the end of the DIMM slots, and the, sorry, they've shortened the end of the wires in the DIMM slots, and just by removing those is removed interference and the noise, and effectively, that just means that you can get higher uh, memory clocks more stable. Um, uh, they're gold uh, tipped as well, and this is just one of the things on the boards because there's dynamic overclock switching to be able to switch from what's best for single um, core loads and multi core loads. And you can set that all up yourself. But I don't want to turn this into a complete review because at the end of the day, this is just meant to be about a quick overview 
and a chance for us to look at it, but I'm not allowed to power it up. So how can I turn the lights on? Well, it's not got a CPU in it, so I'm not technically powering a full system up. So I'm not sure. Well, I've always been able to get away with this. So anyway, here we have a look at the uh, graphics and what is going on in the uh, top left hand corner. It's the only place that you've got any lights on the actual board itself. Uh, and you're going to have to tell me in the comments underneath if this is a design or something that you like the look of. I'm going to assume that you can change all the colours and everything within the software as well. But this is what it's doing in its quick display mode, which all I've literally done is plugged my slave cable in. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment. There will be plenty more board previews popping up. Click the link through to the OC3D website so you can go and pick through more of the specifications and have a look at the actual article over there where we will squeeze some more detail in. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.